Welcome to the NWR Resources of Virtual Series. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and next up we have Peel Mining. ASX code is PEX. Joining us today is Rob Tyson. He's the Managing Director. Now, Peel Mining, they're an advanced base and precious metals exploration company. Their primary focus is on copper, and they're developing a strategic processing hub, which is going to be centrally located to its portfolio of deposits in the Southern Cobar Basin here in New South Wales. Rob, over to you to tell the Peel Mining story. Uh, thanks very much, Kerry. Thanks to NWR for having us today uh, to tell our story again. So uh, yeah, look, absolutely spot on. Our, our story is all about uh, becoming the next copper development company in uh, hopefully New South Wales, but certainly the Cobar Basin. Um, and that's what I'll be running through today. I'll run through the corporate snapshot. So uh, the company, as of the minute, has 418 million shares on issue and about $100 million market cap based off our closing price yesterday. At the end of June, we had just under $17 million cash. Um, our substantial shareholders include uh, Paradise Investments, the uh, well-regarded investment fund. Uh, directors have plenty of skin in the game. St. Barbara sits number two on the register, uh, just under 10%. And uh, they took an investment in us and followed it up a, a number of times over the last few years um, and sit just under that 10% level. And Hampton Hill Mining uh, sitting at 18%. And uh, Hampton Hill is um, headed by a gentleman by the name of Josh Pitt. And Josh Pitt has been a, a big believer and backer of the company over the last uh, eight to 10 years. A four-man board, uh, myself, uh, exploration geology background uh, primarily. Jim Simpson is the other technical director, uh, mining engineering background. And then Simon Hadfield and, and Graham Hardy rounding out the directors um, as not non-execs, uh, but with tremendous amount of commercial experience, uh, you know, probably uh, 70, 80 years plus uh, between them. Um, our address sits in the world-class mining jurisdiction of the Cobar Basin. And uh, look, we've been very fortunate. We went there 10 years ago, uh, roughly, um, and picked up one solitary exploration license. And that license uh, happened to contain the Malibu discovery, uh, which we discovered uh, not long after landing in Cobar. And following that discovery, essentially, it, it uh, highlighted to us the underexplored nature of the Cobar Basin and, um, you know, it sort of went against the grain. A lot of people said it was a mature destination. Uh, we realised quickly after the Mallee Bull discovery that it was anything but. And so we set about building this patchwork quilt of land holding and uh, the largest single company land holder in the Cobar Basin these days. And we've gone on to make two more Greenfields discoveries following Mallee Bull the Whirl on Copper discovery uh, around 2015. So Mallee Bull was back in 2011, 2012, uh, Whirlong in 2015 and Southern Nights in 2017. Um, and I'd also point to another discovery nearby, the Federation discovery on our uh, neighbours ground, um, Aurelia Metals discovered that a couple of years ago. So this, this area um, that we're exploring in uh, to date has delivered around 20 million tonnes of high-grade base metal rich um, mineralisation over the last decade. And I think that must be about as good as it gets in Australia. Um, so we love the jurisdiction, but we've moved beyond exploration. Um, we're, we're very much focused on development. It's a great place to operate in New South Wales, large land holdings. Uh, so we don't have too many uh, neighbours to deal with. Uh, we own the land at Mallee Bull itself, so 20,000 acres, um, but it's a well-known mining area and certainly the, the, the population in the area is supportive of mining and, and mining skilled. Um, we also have, it's easy to operate in, we've got a great network of roads, the Kidman Way and the, the Barrier Highway running through um, near, near our tenure or running through it, um, Moomba to Sydney Gas Pipeline as well. And um, 
it, it, the geology is fantastic. So that's the number one reason for being there. And look, the CSA mine and Peak Mines and Endeavour Mine uh, to the north of our land holding underlie, or underline, I should say, the, the endowment of this district. And we certainly don't see any reason that our deposits can't be similar in, in due course. So we love the area. We're, we're big believers in copper and that's our focus. Uh, even though we've got essentially five metals under our bonnet, uh, we've got copper, lead, zinc, silver, and gold. Um, but copper is one we've believed in for a long time. Uh, and, and even when we discovered Mallee Bull uh, going back 10 years ago, we, we were very much focused on the copper side of, uh, or the potential of the district. Um, the reasons for liking copper have only got better over the last decade since we discovered Mallee Bull. And essentially that's because we need more and more of it, uh, especially as the world moves to decarbonisation. So, you know, I guess uh, in terms of energy supply and uh, electrification, so copper's absolutely um, first and foremost uh, needed to, to make that happen. And, and in short, the world hasn't been discovering enough over the last 20 years plus. So uh, we, we think it's the price change that's occurred is likely to stay intact to a large degree. And uh, according to some prognosticators, it could get a lot better over the next five years. So we love copper. And uh, that leads to our copper first strategy as a company. And um, last year was a year of consolidation for the company. So uh, we had two joint ventures in effect um, uh, up until mid-year last year. Um, we bought one of them out at the other half of Mallee Bull for $17 million um, after a third party offer was received on it. Um, we exercised our preemptive right. And the other joint venture um, with the Japanese government entity, um, they chose to withdraw after that uh, from the Wurlong area. And essentially they were there in support of the Mallee Bull JV partner of our CBH resources who are owned by Toho Zinc. So um, we're very pleased to, to regain 100% ownership of all our ground. We've also bought back a couple of royalties over the last few years. Um, so our ground is 100% owned and unencumbered. Um, but most importantly, the, the consolidation of, um, of Mallee Bull led to this change in metal exposure from Peel being essentially a, a zinc dominant company to a copper dominant company. And with our drilling underway at Wurlong at the moment for a maiden resource, our exposure to copper should increase further to hopefully more like 50% of our metal exposure. So we're well positioned uh, to take advantage of a of a copper um, copper price change uh, that's occurred and uh, and more demand coming in the future, but we're hedged with some good precious metals and zinc and lead exposure as well. So this is what our current resource base looks like, and we've got just under thirteen million tons of of global resources. Um, with our drill out underway at Wurlong at the moment, where we obviously anticipate that. Uh, that global resource base will increase, hopefully to closer to 15 million tonnes. Um, but the weighting towards copper will increase too, because Wurlong is a copper silver system. Uh, there's very little zinc, lead and gold in it um, to date, uh, but certainly good copper intercepts. And I'll, I'll talk some more about that shortly. But uh, Mallee Bull and Wurlong underpinning our copper first strategy. So the copper first concept, um, we've been looking at the idea of a, a new central milling facility. It's, it's one of the options that's potentially uh, available to us. Uh, there's a number of permutations, but uh, this is a sort of a forging ahead on our own sort of concept, which is the right uh, uh, strategy of the company. Uh, and uh, it's, it's underpinned by all these deposits we've got that are centrally uh, sorry, the, uh, the deposits um, uh, are sort of satellite to the central milling facility, which we env envisage would probably be somewhere near Mallee Bull, uh, where we own the 20,000 acres of land. But uh, essentially, Wurlong and Mallee Bull, uh, as a start of life for, for the new development scenario. So we're aiming for critical mass of sort of 12 to 15 million tonnes 
So it's around 10 million tonnes indicated classification. So essentially what we term mineable resources. So that's the uh, what the hub looks like um, in a general sense, but and in a milling sense, this is what a complex mill looks like that'll need it need eventually. Um, so with all those other circuits, so it's copper, lead, zinc, silver, and gold. But the copper first strategy we again like because it's a simpler concept. It's a copper only um, flotation circuit. Essentially, it removes a lot of additional um, infrastructure requirement up front, and obviously much uh, simpler story and lower capital cost story. So we, we're pushing ahead with this concept at the moment and um, we're looking to get an updated um, mill report done by GR Engineering who've helped us to date. Um, and we've also been looking at, you know, whether ore sorting technology is something that we can use to increase the efficiency that we envisage with our, our um, flow sheet. So it's, um, it's something we're looking at and certainly the initial results we've published today are, are, um, are very positive. But the general metallurgy of our deposits is good, um, and the and the work we've done to date shows that we can um, exploit all the metals, generally speaking, that we come across. So Whirlong is uh, where we're drilling. One of the prospects we're drilling at the moment, we're drilling at both Mallee Bull, uh, two rigs there and two rigs at Whirlong, and we're drilling for a maiden resource at Whirlong. It's about seventy k south of Cobar about 40 kilometres to the north of Mallee Bull. And it is a classic Cobar style sort of system. That mineralisation you can see is, um, is about as pure a chalcopyrite style of mineralisation as you'll, you'll ever find. And um, that's led to some very good metallurgical test work results um, in our preliminary results, which you can see there, 97% copper recoveries uh, to a 27% copper concentrate. Um, in our first uh, CIDA test, and we've got some additional metallurgical results pending over the, uh, over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're drilling for a maiden resource, as I said, and today, look, the results we've had have been strong to very strong. Um, Whirlong itself is sort of a three kilometre long footprint, but we're focused in on just a few hundred metres strike where we've had our best intercepts to date. And essentially what we've got is one of these classic Cobar style shoots, um, very long in the vertical plane, a couple of hundred metres of strike. Um, but we think we've got multiple stack lenses, but the, the slice you're looking through here is what we term the Western lens. And uh, it's just one of the lenses we, we've sort of encountered to date, but it seems quite coherent and very good tenor and, and good widths as well. So that will be, you know, that's formed the foundation of our drilling plans. Um, but what we've learned to date is that the system is significantly larger than we initially, I guess, viewed it. And, um, and this magnetic anomaly uh, long section that you can see. So you can see where we've been drilling there, just this few hundred metres of strike on a sort of plus four kilometre long um, geophysical anomaly. Uh, so it's, that's magnetic intensity, essentially. But um, what we can see is that, that sort of the top of the mag anomaly is where we're already seeing this strong copper endowment. Um, the greater system, you know, is going to take some time to obviously play out in terms of exploration, but the potential is excellent. And uh, when I look at that, I actually see an elephant and, um, <laughs> and, and I drew it on last night. Um, with my dodgy drawing skills, but uh, uh, that's what we think could exist at Whirlong. So Mallee Bull is the other component of our Copper First strategy. And Mallee Bull, as I mentioned, was discovered uh, going back 2011, 2012. And again, it's a classic Cobar style sort of system. Um, so sub vertical in nature. And uh, we've drilled it to about 800 metres below surface where we, where we still intercepted mineralisation, but it thinned and look, drilling uh, below that depth from surface is prohibitively expensive. So our focus um, was to define it as deep as we could, uh, you know, as efficiently as we could 
Um, we've got about 7 million tonnes of global resource there at the moment at just under 2% copper. It is one of Australia's highest grade undeveloped copper deposits. And we're now infill drilling this so that we can complete our, our study work, uh, our scoping study and then uh, feasibility study work. So the drill out that's underway now um, initially comprised around 20,000 metres of diamond drilling. Uh, we're just doing a review on that as we're sort of three quarters of the way through and we're just checking that uh, you know whether we need to do any more infill uh, to upgrade it uh, correctly or whether there's any uh, obvious extensional opportunities but uh, essentially it's an infill drill out to convert as much of the resource to indicate a classification as possible. Um, we've released a couple of batches of results to date from it and look stellar results um, you know pretty much as good as you get in terms of copper results in Australia um, in recent times. So uh, we think the drill out's going well overall. Um, obviously we've got to um, finish the work off and then measure it up properly in terms of resource estimation. But the infill holes are certainly coming in with broad intercepts of high grade copper and, um, and we're encouraged by what we're seeing today. So, um, between the two deposits, we see uh, we see you know the ability to build this critical mass for a copper first development story. The third string to the bow, I guess, is uh, as I, as so to put it, um, is the Southern Knights Wagga Tank area. Now, Southern Knight Wagga Tank, we we bought off MMG in twenty sixteen. Um, for a 2% royalty, which we ended up um, paying out um, and buying, buying out that royalty. Um, but essentially, we got it for next to nothing in terms of um, risk at the time. And uh, uh, it went on, I guess, Wagga Tank was known about. It was originally discovered in the mid-1970s and then drilled till, uh, through a number of campaigns up until 1989 and then forgotten. Um, until we turned up in 2016. So we, we drilled some holes into Wagga Tank, the known prospect, and liked what we saw. So we, we got busy with some uh, step out exploration and discovered the Southern Knights component to the Wagga Tank Southern Knights mineral system. It's a large uh, VMS style system. It's slightly different to what we see at Mallee Bull and Wurlong in that it's more laterally driven than, um, than vertically driven. Um, but it's a rich zinc lead silver system. This deposit's got around 12 million ounces of silver in it um, on its own, not mentioning obviously the zinc and lead. So it's a high grade system. Um, Wagga Tank, as I mentioned, was already known about and we did some drilling to get some fresh core to understand what the rocks look like better. Um, but what we like, what we saw, we liked, and we did some geophysics, and that identified the Southern Knights area. Um, some wonderful high-grade intercepts here. Um, we've also discovered in an area in between that we call the corridor zone uh, some deeper mineralization, but uh, it looks like it could easily be the start of another larger lens in this area. But essentially, this system's open in all directions um, and is a large-scale mineral system and. At the moment, about uh, two thirds of it sits in the indicator classification, so it's it's well drilled. And essentially, this in our minds gives us that extra mine life beyond our copper first strategy. So we are a sum of the parts sort of concept with Peel, and uh, Southern Night certainly gives us that additional mine life into the future. Mayday is is sort of the fourth string to the bow, so, uh, uh, again, so to speak, and. Uh, this is a, a gold VMS system. Um, it's, it's sort of in between the, you know, it looks a bit like uh, Southern Knights, but it also has similarities to, to Mallee Bull in some ways. So we do see some massive sulphides and some of that can be quite rich in copper, lead and zinc, uh, always with silver and gold. Um, but we've only drilled this quite shallow. So the deepest hole we've drilled to date ourselves is, is about 300 metres. Where, you know, whereas places like Wurlong and Mallee Bull, the deepest holes are plus six, seven hundred metres. Um, to date, we've, we've only really drilled the upper part of this system. There's a large magnetic anomaly buried below this system and 
and currently most of this resource resides in an in a open pit uh, constrained uh, resource. Um, but there's excellent exploration potential into the future with Mayday, and uh, we certainly see that it could be the additional mine life again beyond uh, that copper first strategy plus southern nights. So um, Mayday is the, the other string to the bow, but all of this is about uh, getting us to a development decision. So drilling at Wurlong um, until roughly Christmas time. Uh, similarly, Mallee Bull, we see that they will probably keep going into the new year with some drilling at Mallee Bull, but we're doing a resource estimate on Wurlong in the near term. And we may continue some drilling beyond that to just make sure we're headed towards reserves at both these deposits. Um, but resource estimation, the maiden resource pending for Wurlong in the next sort of four, four weeks. Uh, Mallee Bull, hopefully by year end, we'll look to um, upgrade the resource at Mallee Bull. Uh, Southern Nights, we, we do have some step out work planned, uh, but we'll see how we go in terms of our copper first strategy. And we may um, revisit and pour some of the budget plan for Southern Nights into Wurlong and Mallee Bull. And then scoping first quarter next year, followed by feasibility work. A uh, lot of study work in the background, so metallurgical test work ongoing, uh, environmental studies, uh, permitting for Wurlong and Mallee Bull in terms of expiration declines, and hydrological study work, so, um, you know, and flora fauna, et cetera. So a lot of study work to get us to a development decision as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, they're the highlights for Peel, but um, we're nothing without our people. And uh, we've got an excellent team on the ground uh, out on site. And it's been a challenging year, obviously, for everyone. Um, but uh, these guys have been, you know, what makes our company great, to be honest, um, behind us. So I'm very appreciative to them, uh, as to the people in our office as well, obviously. And that's the Peel story, Kerry. I don't, I don't see you in that photo, Rob. I'm looking, going, where's Rob? Are you I'm taking only, a photo, mate? Look, I, I got over there earlier this year. I wasn't holding the camera, I can tell you that, but uh, <laughs> there are some other photos with me in them. But, yeah, look, I, I can't wait to get back there and looking forward to hopefully life uh, going back to normal again sooner rather than later so that uh, well, I'm on the ground. Congratulations, guys. If you want to ask a question, put it in the chat group. Peter Checkley says... Um, Rob, could you collaborate with other companies in the area to make things more economical? It's a good question. It, look, it is. It's, and it's not an uncommon question, to be frank. Um, I've had it for a number of years um, <laughs> from, from all sorts of people. Look, uh, what I can say is Peel is, uh, we're a very open and straight company and uh, we think we've got awesome assets. Um, we don't own mills, so obviously, and, uh, you know, and, and unfortunately, similar to our joint ventures, you know, you, you, we can't unilaterally uh, push certain views without uh, other people being interested. So, you, you, you know, it uh, takes two, as they say. Um, but we're, we're certainly mindful of all the optionality that exists. And, um, and we obviously would always look at things that make sense. Um, but right now we see the opportunity to, you know, go alone and, uh, and, and our, our business plan is around that, but it doesn't preclude other options. Well, certainly I think with the copper price being as strong as it was, and as you said, you're, you know, the focus is on copper at the moment, well done you. Um, I, I guess one of the things is you've had some really good, strong results lately, um, where do you think the investment thesis is? For those of us that are watching, that are investors and are going, oh, is now a good time? What would you say to investors about where Peel Mining sits right now for, for investors to jump in? Look, I think we're the next rung on the ladder, to be honest. And you've seen it with companies like, you know, the copper producers all, all lifted off the back of the increase in copper price. And quite often that's the way these markets work, you know, the producers are the first to feel the effect of a stronger price. Um, but then when people go looking for value, it's who's coming into production next, you know. And uh, within Australia, it's pretty slim pickings. Where, where in my view, where the, where the standout company in terms of trying to, if people want exposure to copper, 
Um, but, uh, you know, we've always been a tightly held company uh, as well. You know, we've, we've, uh, we've certainly had our, our, our strong supporters over the journey, but um, our, cop our, our share price, you can see if you look at our chart, um, it can react quite quickly. Um, and, you know, one minute we might be where we're at and next minute we can be a lot higher. Um, so we've, we've always had some volatility and that's because we're so tightly, tightly held. Yeah, that can be a good and a bad thing, I guess. But Rob, uh, in terms of, you know, you had a, um, uh, a chart earlier on in your presentation, which just showed the lack of copper out there and the fact that the grades are literally not that much anymore. Now, your grades are pretty good. In fact, they're spectacular in some cases. In terms of timeline, when are you looking at production? If all went according to plan, when do you think that might be? Look, if the stars align, look, it is listed as a critical metal uh, under New South Wales um, geoscience sort of um, makes um, a list of critical metals. So copper is a critical metal. Um, and we see that as a, as a, a benefit to the, to the approvals process. Look, I'd hope in two to three years, you know, we could be looking at production. Um, you, know, if the, you know, if we can knock off all, all this work off in an orderly fashion and uh, get to that investment decision, then, uh, you know, I think we can be in production in 2024. All righty. Well, we've run out of time, Rob. Well done. Lots of work. Stay focused. Rob Tyson, Peel Mining, ASX Code PEX. Congratulations. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, today. Kerry.